What's up, Internet? You're tuned in episode 9 of the Steam Deck Podcast, Flip Screen Games' weekly podcast about Valve's hot new handheld, the Steam Deck. I'm your host, Pete and Bessie, joined, as always, by my very good friend and co-host, the master of tutorials, Mr. Stephen Radford. Hello, hello. Hello, Stephen. How you doing? I'm all right, you? I'm doing great this week, and uh, you know, hopefully you listeners are doing great this week, too, because you've got PlayStation and Xbox running on your Steam Deck after uh, Steve dropped those awesome tutorials. Thank you so much for the reaction to those. It's been really overwhelming. We've gotten a ton of new subscribers uh, since last week's show, so if, you, if this is your first episode of the Steam Deck podcast, welcome. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being a new sub. Uh, and I hope that you enjoy the podcast as much as you've enjoyed Steve's tutorials showing you how to get uh, a lot of mileage out of your Steam Deck. Because if you enjoy that, I think you'll enjoy the show because we do talk about the news and everything, but we also often kind of give tips and tricks and things like that. So if uh, if that's up your alley, I, I think you'll enjoy the show as well. Yeah, agreed. Um, yeah, and I'm sure we'll be talking more about it next week, right? We're going to be talking about comparing all of the streaming services on Steam Deck. <laughs> so I got to be honest with you, Steve. I don't know because if, if you recall, if you tuned in to last week's show, this week was supposed to be when we had Kevin Whammer from Overkill on to talk about the state of the Steam Deck survey. And then next week we were going to do the streaming comparison. Yes. Kevin, unfortunately, had to reschedule on us. So he is not obviously we're here without him today. So I think the plan is for him to come on next week. And maybe we do the streaming stuff as well. We're going to have to play it by ear a little bit. So it might be another week or two on that one. I do deeply apologize for the schedule being messed up. But you know how these things go, right? Sometimes stuff happens and, you know, Kevin had a, a personal situation come up. So, um, you know, obviously we want to we wanna be respectful and understanding of that. So I hope that you, the listener, uh, are also respectful and understanding of the fact that we're going to have to push the state of the Steam Deck conversation until next week. But... I actually think that works to our advantage because there was a ton of news this week uh, that is yeah. worth digging into. So I don't think we would have gotten everything if we had had him on this week. So that's, you know, silver linings, I guess, right? Um, there is a Steam Deck client update and an update to the Steam OS that we're going to be talking about. There is a connection to the PlayStation Network has been discovered in uh, Marvel Spider-Man Remastered and, and, and an additional uh, new a new wrinkle to that story that we've already talked about so that's pretty interesting as well as the announcement that um well, i guess not announcement the soft confirmation will say that the steam deck has passed one million units sold and that's not even it there's also steam next fest it's a it's a jam-packed episode today so i'm excited to jump into it but before we do let me remind you that this episode of the steam deck podcast is brought to you by our patreon producers for the month of october for the first time, they are Christian Oliveria, Christopher Valenz, Gabriel Hasselmeyer, a.k.a. Asobi, Mary Berry, Wakahula, and Zaid Ida. Thank you all so much for your support over on Patreon.com slash FlipScreenGames of this and all of our sister shows. We greatly appreciate you. Y'all are the realest of the real. If you want to go and show your support for the show, just like they did, you can head over to flipscreen.games, which is our website, and you will find links to all the places you can find us on the web, including our Patreon. You can become a Patreon producer. Uh, you can get uh, a bunch of really cool perks and goodies in addition to getting your name read on the air. Uh, you can also submit Patreon producer topics where once a month we will do a special episode of the shows where we do a main topic chosen and voted on by you, the patrons. Uh, if you tuned into last week's shows, you know that we were supposed to work on that episode this week. Unfortunately, um, Steve, we're, we're good to explain what happened, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. So Steve, uh, uh, unfortunately, had a seizure earlier this week, which was the first one in a couple of years, which kind of pushed back our production schedule a little bit. Um, so we're right now trying to figure out where we can fit in that extra episode to get it recorded uh, this week. But if you don't see it by the end of this week, it'll be next week's show. So again, apologies for the disruption of the normal schedule, but things that were a little bit out of our control. So hope you understand that one. Um, but yeah. It, I, I also, I also want to say I'm also willing to I think we're willing to accept suggestions for tutorials or other videos oh, as yeah. well. If you don't just want it to be on a podcast and you want to Patreon produce an actual video, like say you, for example, there's something you wanted to know how to do on your Steam Deck, you weren't sure how to do it, you could suggest that as a topic. Patrons could vote on it and then we could make a, a video on it as well. So that's 
a possibility if you wanted to to do that. Yeah, great point. And of course, even if you're not a Patreon supporter, you are of course welcome to make those suggestions. Uh, but we we are then welcome to not listen to them. <laughs> so <laughs> take, you know, take that with a grain of salt. But uh, of course, if you don't have any money for us, that's fine. There's dozens of free ways that you can get involved. You can write into the show. Uh, you can join our Discord, where we've got a growing community of dorks just like you out there playing video games, helping each other find Steam decks, all kinds of good stuff. Uh, so if you want a safe, inclusive community for you to come and chat games, um, we, we'd love for you to come join us. As long as you're, you're nice and cool, you're welcome uh, in our community. So come be a part of it. And then, of course, there's links to all the other places you can find our content. We've got our Twitch channel where we're streaming, you know, generally two to three times a week. We've got uh, Flip Screen Live, which is our second YouTube channel where we throw up the archives of all of our gameplay uh, content over on the, the Twitch channel. Um, and we've got a bunch of new videos going up there. We were quiet over there for a couple weeks while I was doing wedding stuff. But I've got us caught up and we're back on a, a video per day schedule right now. So go go check it out. We've got uh, playthroughs of Shenmue 2 going on right now. A couple indie games, stuff like that. It's been some good stuff. So uh, however you choose to get involved, we really do appreciate you coming and hanging out with us. And uh, if you haven't already, make sure you go check out Steve's tutorials on how to get uh, Chiaki, the PlayStation tool or um what was the it was green light is the xbox one right? green light is the xbox yeah. one yeah so go check those out as well if you haven't already and uh, make sure you're right in and let us know how you're getting on with them so we're gonna kick things off with a follow-up from last week's show we got an email uh, from a listener named Andy who wrote in and said, Hi guys, I've been enjoying listening to your show, and this past episode you were discussing where to buy Steam games. While Steam is a great choice, there are plenty of other websites that offer better deals and sales. I highly recommend it I excuse me, I highly recommend using is there any deal.com for searching for game deals. This website searches various reputable Steam third-party key sellers. You can view the price history of the game and set email alerts for when a game drops below a certain amount or percentage. There is also gg.deals, excuse me, which is essentially the same, but I prefer the other. I've heard of CD Keys before, but I've never used it since it's considered a quote-unquote gray market key seller. There's some articles out there that go into more detail of the potential grayness of using the website. Love your show, and definitely check IsThereAnyDeal.com. Has saved me a few bucks on game purchases. Thanks, Andy. Thanks for writing in, Andy. I really appreciate that. I'd never heard of uh, IsThereAnyDeal.com, so definitely uh, great to have another resource kind of added to that list to address, I believe it was Trendy Brandy's question from last week. Um, so yeah, this is uh, Navalis. Oh, it was Navalis. Thank you. So I'm taking a look and I, I hadn't used it in the past, but it looks like it's pretty thorough. Um, you have a, a lot of, a lot of, of filter options. Like if you want to just like go to a specific store, like green man gaming or like humble store, which were some of the ones I, I think we talked about last week. Um, but they even have like other, um, you know, like like storefronts from publishers like Square Enix and the Ubisoft store and a bunch of other stuff. So it's it's pretty cool. Um, you have a lot, lot of ability to kind of like search by platform or like by things that are like genre or like how deep is the sale and definitely something that seems like it's worth checking out. Um, and they're they're uh, advertising some pretty, pretty good deals here, actually. Yeah, so it's a really cool site, and they like filter up some of the most um, uh, recent deals to the front. But obviously, you can just search for the per game as well if you wanted to. So, at the moment on the homepage, they've got like deals for Red Dead Redemption Two, down from its I think original list price of fifty five down to like twenty three uh -huh. on some websites like um, Game Game Belay or. Um, green man gaming so there's a there's a ton of places you can it, it like searches for it's cool it to tell you oh i'm sorry go ahead i would say i will tell you if it's going to be like a steam key or if you're going to get it on like um the epic game store for example and it, it's neat too because you can also like filter by like how much the cut is so like you can look and specifically see like what are the best deals going on right now and things like that so Looks like a really, really good tool. I definitely want. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try to take advantage of and set up some of the alerts for some of the games on my wish list um, to see if I can snag them at a better deal. Because, like Red Dead Redemption Two, for example, is a game I've really been thinking about replaying. But it's like, do I really want to spend fifty bucks on a game I already own? Not really, you know. Um, so, this is this is a great, great tool. So, thanks for the recommendation, Andy. This is awesome. 
And then, of yeah, course, really cool. uh, gg.deals is the other option if you want to check that out as well. Yeah, I didn't actually check that one out. Did you have a look at it? I didn't. It looks like a similar site, but it, it, just a different style. Yeah, um, the interface what, what is... is. Uh, the interface is like a little bit... It, it, it It's simpler. Like, it, it feels more like a blog roll, kind of, where it's just kind of like a straight line, you know? And it's like, it, it feels like you have less ability to toggle and, and get in the nitty-gritty. But I think for some folks, that's actually probably preferable, right? Like, you can just click and see, like, what are the new deals, like, you know? And, and just click on something, like, simple, you know? And not necessarily having have to have that same level of kind of involvement if you don't want to get, like, spreadsheety about it. So, definitely, definitely yeah, another I tool to consider. Why, uh, I also checked out Humble Bundle after we spoke about it last week, and they've got this thing which I didn't even know about, which is the Humble Choice membership. Have you heard about that? Yeah. Where yeah. you pay, you pay eight ninety nine, at least in the UK, eight ninety nine a month, and they give you like a bunch of games. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna sub to it for a month because there's a bunch of games I actually was considering getting anyway. Like Death Loop is is their headline game for this month, but you also get can you also pick up um, like Little Hope from the Dark Pictures anthology, and a game I played in the Steam Next Fest earlier this year, Signalis, which is due out on October twenty seventh. You get that day one when it launches. Um, so I may I may end up snagging that no, just because I really want Signalis. Refresh my memory because I remember them announcing this program, but I don't quite remember the the details of it. Is it like when you sub to this for the month, you just get all these games for eight dollars, or do you only have access Correct. to them while you're subscribed? You own them forever. What a deal! Eight bucks. Yeah, and for all, Deathloop, and Deathloop's all supports... fifty dollars right now. I know it's crazy, and every single month the charity changes, and the money goes towards like helping out that charity as nice. as humble, humble does. What's it called again? The humble what? Humble choice. Humble choice. membership. Yeah. I'll have to check that out. I haven't I haven't looked yeah, at I it think... since they announced it. I was like, oh, it's a great idea, but I don't really play PC games like that. So, yeah, I think it's I think it's really cool. There's also a Baldur's Gate bundle at the moment as well, which is some of the best CRPGs you'll ever play. So if you're in if you're into CRPGs like Divinity Original Sin, for example, but you never went never played any of the original Infinity Engine games, go and pick up this bundle you can get all of the boulders gate games and i think icewind dell was in there as well and main maybe planescape was in there um pathfinder can... neverwinter nights Path... yeah uh, so go pick that up if you're into crpgs because yeah, it's the best games ever made it's like every Baldur's gate game almost yeah, yeah. None Pretty of good. the Baldur's Gate games that you like, though the Dark Alliance. No, ones. not the Dark Alliance ones. I I, I don't <laughs> not like those Baldur Gate those Baldur's Gates. I've just not played them. Um, yeah. I only played the the ones on the PS2. I actually think you probably would like these because you really like Disco Elysium. Yeah. And and you can see the lineage of where Disco Elysium got a lot of its inspiration from from these games. Yeah, that does sound cool. All right, so let's uh, let's jump into the news this week. Uh, we're gonna kick things off with the updates to the Steam client, Steam Deck client, and the Steam OS update three point three point two. Uh, so this is the this is the latest update for the stable channel, right? So if you're one of the folks that doesn't do the beta or the early access, what is it? What's the other one called? There's the preview and the beta channels. Preview and so beta, all of yeah. those things have now been rolled into stable. So the stuff that we spoke about last week with the improvements to the docked mode have been rolled in now to stable. However, they have made a couple of changes. So uh, the frame rate switcher has now been removed from external displays um, from the little quick access menu. Now I use this all the time because I have a 120 hertz display and setting it at 40 meant it hit the sweet spot still um but you can go turn it back on there is an option if you um go to developer settings you can you can turn it back on if you want to um uh, but they've also now made it so it will keep track of the changes you've made both independently for docked and for handheld thank so god if you make those performance changes like if you set the frame rate to like 30 frames per second when it was in docked mode but you want it 40 frames per second when it's handheld It'll remember all of that now. That's which huge. Is great. So we're one step closer to where we want to be with those like two profiles that you have for docked mode and for handheld mode, which I was very happy about. Yeah, that's great. 
really cool to see that uh, come through. And then some of the other smaller changes they've done, like frame pacing fixes, some trackpad improvements, including things to like um, uh, fixing up some of the stuff with the flick stick, which I'm, I never use. So I'm not really aware of um, of like the changes that they've made in detail, but I think they've changed the refresh rate down from 240 hertz to 120 hertz. So it's a little, le little bit less responsive. And boot boots uh videos now these like took the the steam deck community by storm these last couple of weeks i don't i don't know what this is so when you you haven't seen any of the custom boot videos i'm sure you must have seen some of them oh like, oh yes 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 okay yeah i have because there's a there's a great twitter account i follow that is it's i think it's just called fraser looking at video games and it's like people just editing fraser into shots of games and somebody took the fraser intro and, <laughs> and made the yeah and it's a steam deck at the bottom. it's yeah, like yeah it's the, the the new york skyline comes in that it's just a steam deck <laughs> it's great yeah, well, while Valve being Valve decided to fully embrace the community making these changes, and they've added in official support for these boot videos now. So you can create a new directory at um, in your home directory, .steam slash root slash config slash UI override slash movies. If you add any .webm video in there, it'll detect it, and it will use that. So here's what video. I need from you, Steve. I need you... <laughs> to give me the text i need i need a graphic that's our font that says yeah. steam deck with like the little thing and i'll <laughs> and i'll animate it i'll animate it <laughs> and we can we can throw that out that would be awesome yeah that's fine yeah i got that over so i, I just love the fact that with anything like this rather than i don't know other vendors might decide no, we don't want you modifying our consoles or doing anything like this. Valve just like, nah, sod it. Let's embrace it. Let's like fully accept the fact that this is something people want to do. And we'll add in official support so that whenever you update your Steam Deck, the changes that you made don't get wiped out. Because before it was in, people were having to modify a folder, uh, and modify a file within a folder. And whenever they would update it, it would get wiped by the update. Now there's an override folder. That doesn't happen, which is really cool. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. Um, and, and again, right, like, I think it, it just speaks to what's so fun about the Steam Deck, that it is, like, a, a you know, pretty much totally open platform, and that, you know, um, this kind of thing, I think, you know, to your point, would have at best been something that, you know, other uh hardware developers would like tolerate right or like or that would that would be your best case scenario that they're like oh there's a thing you want to do sure here you go we, we added a thing you can just do it now and it'll just work it's like oh beautiful love it so i uh we'll we'll, we'll have to work on our custom uh steam deck startup screen we'll we'll, we'll get that out to the folks at some point <laughs> Uh, so let's let's jump into the uh, the next bit here, which is uh, a, a little bit of a little bit of intrigue. This is something we talked about back on episode two of the podcast, um, yeah. where there had been the discovery of some mention of a a PlayStation PC launcher found in Spider Man Remastered uh, over on Steam. So now uh, there is another update, right? Uh, kind of the latest um, patch to the game adds the ability for you to link your your PlayStation Network account. So the actual copy, it says, link your Steam account to PlayStation Network for access to early unlocks and additional skill points in Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered and other gifts in other PlayStation Studios games while you're linked. So obviously, a lot of... A lot you can take from that in terms of like early unlocks. It's like, what does that mean? Does that just mean like in game, like you're unlocking things more quickly for some reason? I would reason? imagine you get because like it was next to a picture of an outfit, so I imagine it's like some of the suits that you can unlock a little yeah. bit earlier than you would usually, like the aesthetics and things. Sure. Or uh, like again, if they're giving you additional skill points, you can like level your character up faster and like things like that that are just kind of like in game benefits. Yeah. Same with like gifts in other games. I can imagine it working because I'm playing through Horizon at the moment. I can imagine it working in that where they maybe give you some additional resources or something that or, you can kind of pick up. Or you get a crossover skin, 
right? Because like that's yeah. that's fairly common in PlayStation games. Like maybe it's like, oh, there's a Spider-Man skin in Horizon now, right? And, I like, could see like the same in Forbidden West. You know how she has like the face paints. I could see like Spider-Man face paint. Yeah, where it's like it's like the shape yeah. of the eyes from his yeah. mask or something. Or she has like a suit that's like red and blue, you know, and like it kind of looks like that. Because that was like a thing. And granted, it's like not one for one. Maybe Horizon's a bad example, but like. Um, in Ghost of Tsushima, there was, like, a special skin that you, like, emulated Sly Cooper, right? Which was, like, their Sucker Punch's old franchise. So, things like that I could I could see making sense. Um, I think the big question is, like, does this mean that we might get trophy support on PC? I think, I think that's where we're headed, right? We speculated back on episode two that were they going to do their own launcher. Even if they don't do their own launcher... Having it connect to PlayStation Network, having it connect to your account, you could quite easily tie in Steam Steam achievements with PlayStation Network trophies and have it so you can get like full trophy support, which I think people would be really happy about. I'd also love to see them fully commit and do what Ubisoft does with their Ubisoft Connect and have it where you can have the cross progression. So I can bring my save from my PlayStation over to my Steam account, and then I can do the opposite when I wanna go play on my TV again. Because it just, it gives you the ability to play how you want, where you want, when you want, and you're already paying for the game twice. Like you've bought the game on on PlayStation and you've bought the game on PC, why not let people just have cross progression and, and play where they want? Yeah, I don't I don't understand like what the intricacies of that are like from a tech perspective, right? Like especially cuz it's like across clients and stuff, but I mean that I think that's the dream, right? And the ability that you can now connect these PC versions to your PlayStation Network account, it feels like you're getting closer and closer to that being a reality, you know, and that being something that is doable. So, fingers crossed. Be really cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they've also added a bunch of other stuff in this. Like, it it goes into detail on the um on the post, which we'll po- put in the description. Um, you get the resilient suit and the concussive blast gadget, basically from the beginning as soon as you um connect to the accounts, which oh, is, okay, I guess cool. Um, but they've also added in additional support for Intel's XESS, so the with the Arc G- GPUs on the way out. XESS is out, but XESS also works with other GPUs, so I'd be interested to see if that works with the Steam Deck at all. I'd like to get my hands on Spider-Man Remastered at some point and, and check that out, because they've also upgra- updated um, FSR to, to version 2.1.1, which is only probably going to improve the performance as well, which is good. So, Nick's here is doing a fantastic job with Spider-Man Remastered. Obviously, we've got Miles Morales just around the corner. But there's also a bunch of other PlayStation games due out. Like we had Sackboy that just like randomly got announced out of nowhere, which is the first PlayStation 5 exclusive coming to to Steam. And also the Uncharted game is this month as well. I don't think it was exclusive. I think that is also on PS4. But it was a cross launch. Sackboy? I believe so. Oh, okay. I think. I th- I thought Sackboy was exclusive, but you you're probably I'll con- right. I'll confirm. Uh, it's just very interesting, you know. Obviously, with with this PSN linking in there, it really. And we also had the conversation, which we'll probably talk about more over on the Flip Screen Games podcast um, this week, with uh, Herman Holst confirming that all of the live service games are going to be coming day and date to both PlayStation and, and PC. PC. Yeah, very cool. And yeah, to confirm, it was on PS4. So yeah, definitely I think we're going to have more news about PlayStation on on PC and by extension Steam Deck in the weeks to come. Um, It seems like it's only ramping up. So uh, definitely cool to see. So jumping into our next story, uh, we got the kind of soft confirmation that the Steam Deck has passed 1 million units sold. Uh, Steve, why don't you give the kids the story here? Yeah, so uh, David Edmondson from from KDE, which is the um, the the so- software development, I guess, cohort that releases a bunch of software on on the Linux platform, and is also responsible for the GUI, the Power Steam OS's desktop mode. So the Plasma GUI is ri- is written by KDE, and they worked in close collaboration with Valve in order to to get that released uh, on Steam OS. So he, uh, David Edmondson, did a talk at Academy 2022, which is their like uh, conference that they do. Um, and there's a video on YouTube where he said um, they have crossed over a million 
and they're still processing the back orders. Once they've done the back orders, then they expect another surge of sales because then it's going to be available in store. And there's a few things that are really interesting here for, for, uh, for me. Obviously, the fact that they've, he's like, I guess, confirmed that they've hit a million. I mean, I guess he would know because he would know how many installs there are. Uh, but also, like, what does he mean by available in store? Is that going to be just available to purchase? Is it going to be like in Best Buy and you can just go buy one? I kind of think so. That's what I'm thinking. Right. What else do you mean by that? Yeah, because because I think we're getting very close to the queue being pointless. I've had multiple people this week order, like I know multiple people who have ordered one, and within three days they got an email saying your Steam Deck is ready to order. The queue is basically less than a week at this point. So I think we're probably in the next month or so, if not the next couple of weeks, going to see Valve just be like, right, we don't need the queue anymore. We're going to get rid of it and you can just order one and, and we'll give you a date as to when you can expect it. Uh, because I think the queue is kind of just, an, an, it's not necessary at this point. Yeah, I mean, I think <clears throat> I think where we're at is probably in the next couple months it'll be done, right? And there won't be a queue anymore. But right now, they're not able to service it literally the same day. So it's like we're still kind of just seeing that trickle. But yeah, I think you're totally right. If it's if we're looking at like a three day wait time, like how much longer until that's a day? How much longer until you that's... might as well just make you might as well just have that. If you know the estimation is well, we're going to be able to service that within three days. You might as well just take the money up front. Exactly. And just like start processing the order rather than saying right, we'll take your five dollars now. Come back in three days later, and we may have lost the sale and because I... someone didn't get the email or right. they decided not to buy it in the end. And I bet you that the. I bet you that's what they're working towards and that it's once it's 48 hours or 24 hours, that'll be when they flip the switch and it's like, hey, you can just get one now, you know, which would be which would be amazing. Uh, and, you know, I think I believe that they, they, they've hit a million. I don't know if I believe they've like far exceeded a million. I, I feel like a million feels no. about right. Yeah, um, uh, particularly because th this feels like one of those things like when you get the inadvertent leak of information because it's somebody just speaking casually and they're like this is this is common knowledge right like we we know yeah this. yeah like, oh yeah they've crossed over a million yeah it's just like right uh, and it's like uh, how <laughs> how far over a million who's to say but i would say I, I would i would take that to the bank i would say he i'm i'm pretty confident that he knows that information and he spoke out of turn right like this is like like this gets like like leaks from like movies and stuff happen like this all the time Right, we're like, or like it happens in games too, right? Where some person, it's like, oh, they put it on their LinkedIn or whatever, and they're like, oh, what the fuck? Like this, th this thing's we happening. Had something similar happened the the other week where uh, Nvidia was submitting, I think um, it was stuff to go into the Linux kernel for um, the new Tegra chip, and it was basically confirmed that it's going to be the chip that goes into the new Switch. Right, and and you know people just accidentally reveal this information it's like Sometimes oh whoops happens. and he was like he was in the middle of a talk you can't really backtrack on it you can't really go oh no actually i didn't mean that you can't edit it out because we were in a room full of people like stuff stuff like this does happen it happens um yeah so i, I would i would believe it before i wouldn't you know like yeah. it, it feels too like specific you know to be like oh yeah they cross over a million and they have plans to put it in stores it's like Okay, I believe that. You know, I mean, and to be and fair, when do you think they like cross that number though? When did they? Yeah, great question. I don't know. I would, I would imagine recently, um, because you think about it, right? And like they ramped up production and they put out, they pushed out more than they thought they would. I wouldn't be surprised if the goal was a million by the end of the first year, and that they just hit it now instead of in like December. Yeah, I could see that. You know. Yeah. You're, pro you're probably right. I, I think they probably hit it a couple of months ago, around yeah. when we heard that the production was, was ramping up. Yeah, like I bet and, you like and... late August, early September, probably. Yeah, most likely. Because that was when they yeah. were like, oh, okay, like we're, mov we're moving Q3, uh, yeah, Q3 up by like three weeks or whatever. And it's like, okay, like that, that to me signals a pretty big ramp up in production that you were able to move an entire quarter's worth of you know pre-orders up by like three months like that's pretty significant so i, I want to give a bit more context in the description of the talk before we um we dig more into it yeah go ahead so 
in the in the description it said in this talk i will share how plasma which is the the gui interface for the desktop mode fits into the steam deck and what aspects of kde made us the right choice for their new user base i will then share some of the projects that contractors blue systems have been doing for valve and how the work there benefits not just the steam deck but improves the ecosystem for all plasma users so it's clear that they're working pretty closely with valve and valve has contracted them to do some some work for them so i i definitely believe that the number and i i think it was just a mishap that that he revealed it yeah. but do we, do you think we're ever going to see official figures from this? Like, do you think they're ever going to want to brag and be like, we've got millions? Or are they just going to carry on doing it behind closed doors to be like, yeah, we've got a million, you know, do you want to come on board? Yeah, I don't know. Like, I... My knee-jerk reaction is yes, that they will eventually provide some kind of official figures, but it's like, Valve plays stuff pretty close to the chest. You know, like, that's not really, like, their MO, but it's also, like, you look at the Steam Deck, and I feel like they're treating the Steam Deck like a more traditional piece of hardware, even though, obviously, they're doing it in a very non-traditional way, but, like, going through the trouble of, like, going to TGS and, like, having kiosks where you could go and pick it up and play it, and if the this, you know, rumor here that they are going to sell it in stores is true, to me, that, that points to thinking about this as more of a mainstream product than I think, you know, um, than I think we maybe thought when it was announced, you know, and you look at it now and like how much it's growing. Like, I don't know. I feel like you hit a point where like eventually that number becomes a, a status thing that you want to kind of hang your hat on. And like you said, right, you use that in marketing material, right? Join the millions of players who are experiencing pc gaming on steam deck right like that's a strong value proposition right because i think there are a lot of people who have heard of the steam deck that like don't necessarily have interest in picking one up and are kind of like well, what's the deal with that is that legit like is that good should i be thinking about that and like i i think this is where it steamrolls though it's like they've cleared out the million people who were interested in it pre-launch you get it into stores, and it's not the first time they've had their hardware in stores. The Steam Link was available to buy at GameStop, and I think other retailers as well. So I could I could see them using their connections that they had during the distribution of, of that product with the Steam Deck. And it feels like this is a step above that. Yeah. Like, people are interested in it. People are starting to hear about it. I think as soon as people see the games that are, are, is possible to be played on it, the fact that you can play games from any platform, it's not just from Steam if you want to. I think emulation for anyone that's an enthusiast is a huge selling point. And just being able to buy it in a store at a, a really, I think really good that's price. the thing. I think that's the differentiator is like I I think right now the way you order it feels like a niche thing for a niche product where it's like, I got to get on a waiting list and I'm not going to hear back for like six months and then I'm going to get an email and I got to reply within like two days. And it's just like, that's not how people are used to buying tech, right? Or, or consoles, I guess, but like consumer technology in general, right? Like it's like, I want a computer. I go to the store, I buy a computer, right? I want a PlayStation. I get it on Amazon and it shows up in my house. Yeah, right? but you know, this 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 feels similar to, like a, apart from the Q system, right? It, it feels like it's a similar moment to when the Switch launched. You had all of the people who had a Wii, were really excited about the Switch and, and, and pre-ordered one and bought it anyway because they were Nintendo fans. And even if they were a bit disappointed with the Wii U, they, they wanted to believe that Nintendo can make a really good handheld, a really good home console again. And they pre-ordered it and, and bought it. And so that pre-orders were all sold out for a while. But it really felt like as it gained traction, as people were just like, oh, yeah, have you seen the Switch? It was the like, evangelism oh, like, of the was, community. Yeah, it was like people got more and more interested in it. And now you, you kind of see people who who aren't listening to like the Steam Deck podcast, who are interested in, in video games, but just want to be able to play something like, I don't know, Call of Duty or FIFA on the go and and want to be able to play that and being able to get that on a Steam Deck because you can't get those games on Switch at the moment. It's, an, it's a great proposition and being able to just have that, I think if they can get it into stores, I think in time for the holiday season, which I think they probably still could if they... If they really wanted to, if that was their goal. Mm, I don't know if we'll see it this year, but I, next year, I think, yeah. 
I, I, I think you could get it in this year. And I think having, I think they need to get the dock ready for the holiday season as well. If That's got to be their goal at this point, I think. They've proven that they can get the Steam decks out the door. But the dock was something that was promised for launch. And we're obviously now like nine months into this. I bet you that those are the types of things that are, are the the thing that is making us not hit this kind of more mass market point. That they just don't feel like it's ready for that yet. Because it probably isn't. You know, like I think... Um, it's gotten easier and easier to use it as a casual person who just wants to pull it out of the box and use it. But I think it's not quite there yet. And I think that like, given the fact that the switch already exists and there is like a certain market expectation for like what this is as like a switch competitor, whether or not that's fair, that is the perception of the device. And I, I bet you that they want to have a more, quote unquote complete package ready before they start selling it in like a Best Buy, right? Where like they probably want the dock to be out and already working. They probably want to have um you know a certain amount of some of these like more user friendly features kind of like supported natively with like the most stable version of the OS. And I think like there's probably a few box they want to check uh left before they really are like I think that docked mode was the last box to tick and they've they've now hit it. In today's, well, in this week's release, they finally pushed it out the door. Yeah. And um, I, that's it, really. Like, yeah. And then now you got to get the dock out. The dock out there. Right. Yeah, what's, yeah. I think really the, the software's now in line for it. And we just got to, we just got to wait for the dock now. And then maybe then that's when they go, right, let's get this into stores. Yeah. I, th- I think you're probably right. All right, so before we close things out here, uh, we did want to talk a little bit about Steam Next Fest October edition. Of course, uh, Steve talked about Steam Next Fest a couple episodes back during the summer uh, when you know um, Valve had that popped off. The, the next one is going to be from October 3rd to the 10th, so if you're listening to this today, uh, we are already in the middle of the Steam Next Fest. Uh, have you picked up anything with this that you like are excited about? No, I haven't yet. Um, so I wanted to, I wanted to raise it, uh, raise awareness for if people hadn't, um, seen it, but there are a few things on my list that I want to check out. And my partner's actually really excited about as well. Like there's some that were on our wish list that, um, like hotel renovator is one because we both really liked, um, uh, what's it called? House flipper. And it's like the hotel variant of House Flipper, which we're really excited about checking out. Yeah. But I found a bunch of games um, during the July Steam Next Fest, so I'm really looking forward to digging through. I basically just go through the list and find anything that looks really cool. They they do a great job of splitting everything out into categories. And I think it's really the best example of some, some kind of um, digital festival that really feels like something like a PAX or an EGX, where you have like developer interviews, live streams of games that you can click through. They've, there's always like five or six broadcasts going on at any one time, where there's people showing off the games that they've been working on or games that they're interested in. And you can download all the demos and play for, for yourself at home without having to go to an event, which is really cool. So uh, I'm looking forward to, to digging through. I recommend everyone goes and, and checks it out. There was one I, I picked up, which was called Retro Gadgets, which I... I, I think it looks so cool, Pete, but it doesn't work great on Steam Deck because it really needs fine mouse control. Um, so I'm probably going to play that one on, on PC. But you basically get um, like a blueprint. It's like, oh, build me a calculator. And you have all of these like pieces that you kind of piece together to build out like a calculator or a game controller or something. Okay, It's really cool. Um, download the demo. Give it, a, give it a try. It runs fine on Steam Deck. It just it, it works best with a mouse. Okay. There's a couple oh, yeah. um there's a couple games that I'm interested in like Gunbrella is one we saw a while ago and like that's got a demo I do kind of want to get get hands on that um that was one that you know definitely caught my eye Yeah um there's a game that I saw uh getting some some press attention uh called Capes which is like a um it's a strategy squad based strategy game that has been compared to like XCOM and like Into the Breach and it's about these uh, people with superpowers who are in this like totalitarian 
uh, government who's like trying to wipe out all the people with superpowers, like to exert more control. And it sounds interesting. Like I, I like turn-based uh, strategy games like that, and I like superheroes. So it sounds interesting to me. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. So there's a couple was, I, I want to try to kick tires onto. Chucklefish's new game, Wild Frost. Um, oh, that's got one. Cool as well. It's like, Ooh. Yeah, it's like a card-based like um, battle game. It's a really cool okay. deck builder. Um, so that one's, I think, I, I, one I want to check out. Uh, Jackbox Party Packs on here as well. Whether they like, I don't know what the demo for Jackbox Party Pack Nine is. Probably just I'm like probably one game. I love, right? Like, it's, I love Jackbox. <laughs> yeah. Rather than like the whole set, it's probably just like one or two games you can try out. Yeah, most cool, likely. Though. But uh, but yeah, I'll check it out. There's there's a ton through uh, on on the list, like hundreds and hundreds of demos. Just uh, dig through. It's it's a next fest if you've not experienced one before like i hadn't because july was my first one which is because i've only gone to pc gaming since i've had a steam deck a phenomenal event really really cool yeah and if you're listening to this the day this drops um you've still got two days to figure it out so go check out some some cool demos this weekend and i would love to hear from folks in the community uh what were the games that you played during steam next fest uh if there's any highlights you want to talk about next week please make sure you write into the show uh you can do that couple ways but again flipscreen.games is the website you can find uh links to our email address questions at flipscreen.games or you can come jump on the discord and we have a, a steam deck podcast thread so um yeah however you choose to to write in i'd love to hear from you about like what are the games you checked out at steam next fest and like what are the games that should be on our radar if we didn't get around to it all right awesome any final thoughts on the steam next fest steve what should, what uh, tips tricks what should we know anything just download everything. If you hate it, you can uninstall it. They're all free. The demos will cease to work after Sunday. So you've got till Sunday to play them, and then you can't launch them Two, anymore. count them, two days. So, so play play all the demos you can. Add them to your wish list. That game Signalis I spoke about uh, earlier in the show that's in that Humble Bundle, well, I played the demo in Steam Next Fest. I fell in love with that game. I really can't wait to play it you will find some games that you're interested in. Beautiful. Awesome. And again, make sure you write in and let us know what those are because uh, I'm always trying to get some more indies on my radar. So please, uh, I'd love to hear from you. All right. So that's it for this week's show. We did it, Steve. Jam-packed episode, just on just about 40 minutes. I can't believe it. Look at us. Just staunch professionals on this show. You know? There's the one thing you can say about us here at Flipscreen.games is that we are staunch professionals. Uh, so yeah. remember, if you want to get involved, you want to show your support, you want to write into the show, you want to join the community, whatever you want to do, head over to flipscreen.games. That's our website where you will find links to all the ways you can get involved. Uh, go check out the tutorials if you haven't already so you can get your Xbox and PlayStation games streaming to your Steam Deck. Go check out our sister shows, uh, however you choose to get involved. We appreciate you tuning into this week's episode of the Steam Deck podcast. For the crew, I've been Pete. He's been Steve. We'll see you next week.